All right, back on this baloney. Uh, what I'm doing here is assembling a few more of these little um, FFC adapter boards, just doing some hot plate reflow there to get the connectors on and then hand soldering on the pin headers. Um, and we're using these a little bit later for a, a little FFC pass through capture. Uh, and I also wanted to throw in a clip of this thing. This was a printer I took apart for a class that we were doing um, and it had possibly the least useful feature I've ever seen, which is this motorized uh, console. It just sort of goes up and down when it turns on and off. I do not understand why they wasted the motor on that. It seems absolutely insane. Um, here we have uh, one of my uh, resistor colleagues' old LED panels that was being driven by a spark core. Spark cores are uh, little Wi-Fi microcontrollers that are unfortunately very much cloud dependent and had stopped working a while back. You'll notice a little Club Mate bottle cap there. That's covering up a piezo that was just excessively loud that would beep whenever the thing failed. Um, and so I'm rewiring this with a Pi Pico W um, and it's going to be operating as a clock. So what it's going to do essentially is uh, one of the cores in that Pico will be driving the LED display and the other is going to be essentially hitting the internet, hitting uh, NTP to get the time and uh, make sure it's displaying the correct time and also listening to uh, subscribing it to an MQTT server we have in space so we can potentially send messages to it, turn it on off remotely, which is something we're trying to do with almost all the art in the space. Uh, I see here I'm just putting some resistors in line. I was essentially trying to uh, emulate the circuit that my predecessor had wired up here and um, it was unclear exactly why these resistors were needed, but I was not about to reverse engineer this panel all over again. So I had the original code that was running on the Spark core, and I was able to modify that for the, the Pico W. Um, and when I finally got it running here, it was rather dim, actually. And I messed around a bit. You can see how it's like sort of fading out there. And at first I thought I was doing something terribly wrong with my, my microcontrol work, but it turns out the power supply just was not beefy enough. Um, old LED displays really do kind of require more juice. LED technology has improved drastically. Here I'm just running off a bench supply so you can see what's going on. And then later on I found, uh, I found a decent power supply in the space with uh, the right jack and I was able to plug it in. Who knows, maybe this is the one that uh, it had been previously running on, which we had lost track of. And this here is kind of a sneak peek. I'm um, working on essentially using those uh, FFC intercept boards to capture the signals going to and from various peripherals to this printer that I've sort of taken the, uh, the mechanical bits off of. And the idea is both to be able to use those external bits as they were originally intended or would have been driven by the board, but also to uh, sort of put that motherboard back in the matrix and convince it that the rest of the world is continuing to operate as it expects, even though it quite clearly is not. Uh, that's a class I'll be teaching shortly.